Viewer Realzy writes, all caps, I hate peanut butter. I am from Europe. This, of course, refers to Craig's statement in a few episodes back. Foreigners hate peanut butter. We got a firestorm of responses from various peanut butter supporters and peanut butter detractors from all over the world. We really found out where... Where the butter meets the road. <laughs> we have fans all over this planet, and we also found out that people have very extreme opinions opinions about peanut butter. Any uh, follow-up to that, or would you like to retract your statement? I'd rather not say anything more on the subject That's ever again for the rest that. of my life. As good Americans, I would like to invite you to join me in enjoying a peanut butter cup. I don't like peanut butter myself, but I love peanut butter cups. <laughs> it's, it's you may be a secret foreigner. We oui, we. Oui. Oh, delicious. Yeah. I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to the basement. <clears throat> if there's a bustle in your hedgerow, don't be alarmed now. It's just a spring clean for the May Queen. Craig, it's May. Have you planted your crops? Sown your seeds? No. How will you provide for your family and your community when harvest time comes? We're all gonna die. And how will you satisfy the brutal pagan gods that hold sway over our very lives? I think you're in need of a viewing of the Wicker Man. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> this is the original Wicker Man? Yes. Yes, I've never seen this. Hey. Yes. <laughs> Released in 1973, starring Britt Eklund, Christopher Lee, and Edward Woodward. If there's ever a guy who needed a stage name, it's that guy. <laughs> this movie is described by Cinefantastic Magazine as the Citizen Kane of horror movies. Christopher Lee loved this movie. He considered it his greatest role, and he acted in the movie for free. Wow. This film was notoriously and hilariously remade in 2006 with real-life crazy person Nicolas Cage. It was directed by Neil Labute, and it was a top-to-bottom disaster. Robin Hardy, the director of the original film, made his own sequel, a so-called spiritual sequel, called The Wicker Tree in 2011. And he is currently working on The Wrath of the Gods, which will complete The Wicker Trilogy. I had a bad experience with the soundtrack of The Wicker Man once. Weird. I was on a road trip from northern Wisconsin down to Madison. It was a horribly rainy day. I was in the back of a VW van... And it had no sway bar, so whenever we changed lanes, automatic car sickness, and the driver of the car was listening to the soundtrack of The Wicker Man, saying it was the best music of all time. And he had no windshield wipers, too. <laughs> I was sure I was going to die on this trip. Craig, it's time for your special gift. And let me tell you, you're going to need this. <sighs> it's a man made out of wicker. It's your own Wicker Man! This will protect me. Tona made that special for you. Really? Yeah. Thanks, Tona. All right, druids and druidettes, dance on over with us to Ye Old Leather Couch for a pagan horror festival known as the Wicker Man. Oh. Whoa! Are you ready to be scared, little guy? No, I don't know. Officer Howie pilots a small prop plane to a remote island called Summer Isle. For me. Oh, this music. <laughs> I feel like I'm on a fun road trip. <laughs> He's there to investigate a missing girl, Rowan Morrison, after anonymously receiving her picture in the mail. When he gets to the island, no one seems to remember that she even existed. <laughs> I tell you no. This girl is a dirty whore. She's wearing buttons. The people of Summer Isle seem very merry and fun-loving. They burst into song at the slightest provocation. The land I'd like my supper now, please. It won't be long, sir. Just a couple more songs. I think you all ought to know that I am here on official business. And there'll be no singing or merriment <laughs> while I'm on the island. Cheer up. Food isn't everything in life, you know. There's also the Landlord's Land Daughter. Daughter! So he goes out to investigate the town, and he discovers an orgy. 
Sergeant Howie doesn't like any of this pagan business one bit because he's quite a religious fellow. He goes up to sleep. Willow, the innkeeper's daughter, you know the old song. The landlord's daughter. She's trying to hypnotize him with her <laughs> pounding on the wall and her boobies. The landlord's daughter is trying to seduce him with her sexual song and her pounding on the walls. I can sense she's really naked over there. <laughs> I hear it self-spanking. <laughs> he doesn't fall for that business because he doesn't believe in sex before marriage. He's a virgin. He maybe he's a 40 year old virgin. He looks kind of old. Sergeant Howie literally dislikes everything he sees on Summer Isle, and he's very vocal about it. Get all raving mad. So not surprisingly, the locals are not very cooperative with him. He f discovers all the boys dancing around a maypole, while the girls inside are learning exactly what the maypole's all about. It is the image of the penis. There's no proof that Rowan Morrison ever died. You mean she doesn't exist? She's dead? There's proof of her in the school register, which Sergeant Howie finds out about when he barges into a school. How did she die? How did she get burned? 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 <laughs> Little shout out for you modern day Wicker Man fans. Yes, we know you want it. There's creepiness everywhere on this aisle. Just right there on the shelves down at the store. Two dozen foreskins, please. <laughs> he sees a pagan ritual going on around a little henge that they have. It's like the cover of Houses of the Holy up in here. <laughs> he finally goes out to see Lord Summer Isle and his tremendous hair. Oh, what is all this? You know how to say it. You're a British cop. Say it right. What's all this then? <laughs> Lord Summer Isle's great-grandfather brought apples there and grew new strains of fruit. And he brought you up to be a pagan. Sergeant Howie exhumes the grave of Rowan Morrison. Inside the coffin, he finds a dead rabbit. He's positively apoplectic about this and about anything else that is even remotely anti-Christian, which on the island of Summer Isle is everything. They might be preparing Rowan Morrison to be a human sacrifice and she may still be alive. He goes to his plane to find that out that it doesn't work anymore. It's been sabotaged, seemingly. This is never good. <laughs> when this happens, it's never, ever good. God's of mischief. <laughs> it's May Day. Everyone starts acting really, really weird. Exhausted, he goes back to the inn to take a little nap. But he overhears the innkeeper and Willow discussing how they're actually going to anesthetize him until May Day's over. That'll make you sleep, my pretty sergeant. That'll make you sleep, my pretty sergeant is one of my favorite English folk ballads. <laughs> He figures out he's got to infiltrate the May Day Festival. He knocks out the innkeeper. How to get burned? Steals the innkeeper's fool outfit, and he joins the procession going out for the big May Day pageant. We want to steal your penis! Suddenly, Sergeant Howie sees Rowan Morrison. He runs up, unties her arms, and he says, let's get out of here. And she says, great, I don't want to be sacrificed. I know a shortcut. There's a chase through a cave. But when he gets out the other end of the cave, he finds the villagers waiting for him. Rowan Morrison tricked him. They're not going to sacrifice Rowan, no, no. You came here to find Rowan Morrison, but it is we who have found you and brought you here. They lured him to the island because he was the ideal sacrifice that they needed to appease their gods. And even if you kill me now, it is I who will live again, not your damned apples. They strip him down, put on some ceremonial paint, put him in a robe, and begin dragging him up to the Wicker Man. It is time to keep your appointment with the Wicker Man. Did you hear that little guy? Ooh, ooh, here it comes! Oh God! Oh Jesus Christ! They drag him up into the big Wicker statue. Mighty God of the Sun! Bountiful goddess of our orchards, ye shall all die! 
Eventually. <laughs> Let's light up this wicker man. The creepiest Fairport convention concert <laughs> I've ever seen. And that's the end of Sergeant Howie and the end of the film. What'd you think of that movie, Little Wicker Man? It was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Okay, The Wicker Man, a horror movie? It gets pretty horror-filled right at the end, but up to there, I mean, it doesn't even seem that eerie. It's a weird police procedural. It's a, it's a mystery, certainly. Yeah. The movie has a bunch of horror movie stuff going on throughout the entire thing. Weird things happening in the dark. A town that is in on the secret and the outsider's not in on the secret. And yes. they're all hiding information from him. You have a hand used as a candle. A seemingly dead girl falling out of a closet. Right. You have all of this stuff, but there's nothing that pushes it. It's just kind of, oh, this is the next clue. This is the next thing that I see. Yeah, yeah. But there's no... Like, sting, like, bum bum. I wonder how much our enjoyment of the film was skewed by the fact that we pretty much know the entire story. I think this is one of those universally spoiled films. Everybody knows the ending to this movie. How much does that color our assessment of it? Do you think it totally dissipates the horror? It's difficult for me to say because I didn't find it to be a horror movie at all going right. through it. Can you imagine that it would if you knew nothing about it? It's hard, it's hard to imagine. Yeah. It's like imagining not knowing what Rosebud is. The horror payoff uh, is quite intense. Even, you know, knowing what it is, and in my case, even have I have seen the ending. The whole build-up to it, it, it really does give you that sense of soul horror that you feel when watching movies like The Shining. Even in the end, when he's up there being burned alive, I didn't find that horrifying. I found it as though he was the warrior who lost. Mm -hmm. You know, he's this soldier of Christ, end of king. I found it very moving. In the end, he sort of believes their religion. Because he, in his prayer, he says, Do not deliver me into the enemy's highness. Don't let that god take my soul. You know, I want, I want my soul to go to you. Yeah. <laughs> so in a way, he's sort of acknowledging that this, this god exists. And he does issue a rather effective curse to Lord Summer Isle. Do the crops for your Summer Isle. Next year, your people will kill you on May Day. And once he puts that bug in everybody's brain, I mean, eventually they've got to start believing it. You yeah. Know? And you see the look on Summer Isle's face where he's yeah. like, this uh, has to work. And then he's like, should have put a gag in his mouth. <laughs> 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 Officer Howie is the worst detective ever. <laughs> yeah. All he does is antagonize and bully and yell at these people from the sec... Before he even gets on land. Yeah. He's yelling at him with the megaphone. How, how could he ever expect them to cooperate with him? Or tell him anything? Heathens. Bloody heathens. I don't know what the British equivalent of the Fourth Amendment is. Can, can cops just barge in and be like, I'm going to look through everything right now. And they'll be like, oh, that's all right. We're in Britain. Well, that was the Wicker Man. We hope your apple crop flourishes. You have an apple crop, don't you? You know, apples. If it doesn't flourish, you know what to do. <laughs> don't encourage people to make construct a wicker man. Well, folks, don't make any human sacrifices. Instead, go to welcometothebasementshow.com, where we have made our sacrifices public <laughs> on the web for you to read and to watch. You can also sacrifice a few of your hard-earned dollars to the Welcome to the Basement PayPal donation button. Recent donors are Brian, Mike, Hal, John, and Christer. 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 Thanks for donating, guys. We will remember you. Last episode, I revealed that Craig Johnson is a beautiful dancer. One of our viewers, Ramen Mustaches, says, I would dance with Craig anytime. So you've always got a dance partner, Craig, although she'll have noodles on her lip. <laughs> Green Penguino says, For some reason, Craig reminds me of the crazy guy that ate insects in the Bela Lugosi Dracula film. Maybe it's his eyes or his ghostly complexion.
And now, it's time for Seen It! Seen It! Tonight on Seen It, we are going to revisit once again films that not only have I seen, but seen at the theater. I went out of my house to a public location and watched these movies. Crazy Mono, 2005. Hey guys, love the show. I don't think anyone has asked you if you have seen any Hispanic films. I can recommend E Tu Mama Tambien with Diego Luna and Gael Garcia Bernal. Seen it. Seen it. I love that movie. I saw it at the Wisconsin Film Festival. It's quite a sexy movie. Yes, it is. The sex in that movie is a little unbelievable. <laughs> you should see it with your sweetheart and get some ideas. Also, there are some amazing tracking shots in the movie. There's a shot of a car driving down the highway and the camera just kind of floating around oh, the car. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, all one shot. Seven Gable writes, Yes, traffic was terrible. I'd say almost as bad as Crash. Uh, I've seen it, and I agree with you. I hate traffic for the same reasons that I hate Crash, although not as intensely. I totally agree. Traffic was a long, pointless, preachy movie. Pre preachy, yeah. yeah. The character's just like saying various moralities directly to the audience. Yeah. And, I, and I, I hate that. That's the worst kind of movie. Tugger, 1231, writes, You should watch Naked Lunch. What a trip. Seen it. I was at a video store out in Portland, Oregon around 12 years ago, and they had all of this movie memorabilia there, and suspended from the ceiling was a mugwump. There... Mugwumps have no liver. <laughs> Mike Cronus, How About Watership Down by Richard Adams. Uh, seen it. In the theater, I was way too young. This movie messed me up. I've never seen it, nor have I read the book. Boy, the ending of that movie, I'm not going to give it away, but it involves a dog... And I just left the theater like, what? why did it have to happen? Why <laughs> The world is a terrible place. <laughs> it was quite a growing experience. But it is Zero Mostel's final film role. He played the little vulture character. SMS Yogren 1. I recommend Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. Baby Jane is a great look at post-child star collapse. Seen it? Not seen it. I saw it in the theater. It was a revival of the movie, obviously. Uh, yeah. The audience seemed to be mostly made up of gay dudes. Gay dudes seemed to like that movie. It's a camp classic. I had never seen the movie before, and they all had, and they thought it was hilarious. <laughs> and I was trying to watch this movie, and I was sort of shocked and horrified by it. And all these gay dudes around me are just rolling in the aisles, and it sort of was a weird experience. I imagine that would be. <laughs> whatever happened to Baby Jane? Find out. And when the movie, watching the movie, whatever happened to Baby Jane? Seen it. Sabretooth Squirrel. Have you seen the old silent movie classic Metropolis? Great movie. Seen it. Seen it. I saw it here in town, and they had a restored print of it, and they had a live actor reading the subtitles. I've seen Metropolis, but the thing is, they're always discovering more of Metropolis because it was cut up so many times in right. the first few years that it was out there that there is no complete print of it. So I saw like the 80s version with the pop music soundtrack, and that's, oh, right. that's the one I saw. I would never want that guy's job when it was his job just to like stand... The dial man? Uh, the dial man, and he just moved yeah. dials around until he was exhausted. <laughs> And just sort of hung off of them. Yep. And then he went home. Mm -hmm. Well, that's seen it, and that's our show. Please check out 1973's The Wicker Man. And if you feel like having a laugh, 2006's The Wicker Man. Go to welcometothebasementshow.com and see all that it has to offer to you. And feel free to make a donation. We're so glad that you joined us tonight. We had a great time. Lil Wicker Man is, is all tuckered out. we got to put him to bed. So we will say good night to you. Good night, everybody. Her ale is lively and strong to the taste. It is brewed with discretion, never with haste. You can have all you like if you swear not to waste. The but each of these guys has his own line of the song, <laughs> and they've rehearsed this and worked it out. So happy we have a visitor. We've been working on this for months. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>